finally this evening our person of the week. We have been watching this man's progress for several weeks now, and as he has wended his way from point A to point B, we thought of how many people there are in so many places who take the time, who make the effort to try to make a difference. I don't understand it for the life of me that uh, the good people on Capitol Hill can put laws in place to protect the bald eagle, the rockfish, and uh, I don't get that kind of reception to uh, keep in place the oldest occupation in history for, for black people in this country, uh, which is farming. Up here. We met up with John Boyd as he was leaving home in Baskerville, Virginia, on his wagon, pulled by his mule, 40 acres, headed for Washington, 200 miles away, to give the politicians a piece of his mind. Black farmers, he says, do not get the same help from the government as white farmers do. John Boyd's great-grandfather was a slave. His grandfather, who was set free only after the Civil War, became a farmer. The last name Boyd was, a, uh, was our slave name given to us by the Boyd family, uh, which was uh, Miss Ethel and uh, William Boyd is, is, were their names. I feel as though we earned the right to live in this country, we earned the right to farm in this country, and we earned the right to participate in these federal programs. In 1999, the Department of Agriculture pretty much agreed when it settled the largest class action civil rights suit in the nation's history. The department found that black farmers had to wait three times longer for loans and subsidies than whites, and black farmers were losing their land because they could not get the help. There's thousands of black farmers across the country who are still out here waiting diligently and uh, in good faith that the government is going to send their check. But thousands of those farmers are not getting the help they expected from the settlement, and John Boy aims to fix that if he can. Family farming is hard no matter who you are. At the turn of the century, there were more than a million black farm families. Today, there are fewer than 18,000. We're only one or two generations uh, from the farm, whether we wanted to be from the farm or not. Most black Americans in this country came from the farm. John Boyd was born in New York City, but he spent summers on his grandparents' farm in Virginia, and he loved it. Today, he has a farm of his own where he raises chickens and cows and grows soybean and wheat. And he does have that streak of activism in it. He ran for Congress once, but he lost. Come up easy. But here he is in Washington this week, determined to get attention. He picked up an extra mule named Justice along the way. And he didn't do half bad in Washington. That's Congresswoman Maxine Waters. They have not treated you guys right. Senator Grassley, thank you. Yeah. Republican Senator Grassley, he's from Iowa, took time for a ride. Pretty good photo op, too. The Democratic presidential candidate Dennis Kucinich from Ohio had a meeting. Okay, I can take you right up the floor of the House and have you meet a number of members of Congress. I would love to do that. And the Republican Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, took time to listen as well. After 16 days on the road, John Boyd had done pretty well. John Boyd almost lost the family farm some years ago. Had it happened, he says, he would have felt less of a man. Farmers understand that perfectly. Today he knows that one man can make a difference. People will listen. You just have to make the effort. There's a lot of work that needs to be done on this issue. And if it takes me riding, riding this mule and wagon 280 miles to Washington, D.C., I think I would do it all over again if it would help save the, save the black farm in this country. And so we choose John Boyd, keeping us focused on the nation's history.